Garrett Patterson asks, what are angels? I used to pray and asked, could I be as important as one of the chosen they wrote about in the Bible? So angels are descriptions of algorithms. They're descriptions of motion of change, right? So we've, we've come to realize that there is a motion of change, that at some point in the day around 6 a.m., it starts to get really bright outside. And about six hours later, in most places, it gets really hot. And then about six hours later, it gets darker. And then six hours after that, it's the darkest, right? We've noticed that that's a pattern of change of energy. So we've given it labels, names, and titles. Day, noon, dawn, dusk, midnight. Now, it's not actually any of those things, but we use those labels to grasp what's happening. If I say daytime, nighttime, noon, you're instantly going to know what I'm talking about. Now, your noon is not going to be the same as mine. When I vision noon, I think of something. When you vision noon, you think of something. And it's probably associated with memories that you've had. Right? So when we talk about angels, we're talking about descriptions of specific uh, change. Now, these archangels, we're dealing with change that's on a very wide-reaching level. These are not people in the clouds with wings. You're dealing with algorithms and patterns of change of the flow of energy. Now, some of these changes, like I said, are, are so specific, just like the sun coming up, we call it day, the moon coming out, the sun going down, we call that night. Those are specific flows of change. Now, there are other cosmic flows of change that don't just depend on the planet Earth. There's change that happens regardless of physical form, right? There's very, very, very subtle change. For example, one of the archangels has to do with the function of condensing compression and destroying right and on the opposite side there's an angel that has to do with expanding and aggregating and accumulating neither of them are good or evil right we all want our bank account to expand and accumulate we don't want those viruses to enter our body and expand and communicate so notice it's actually the function of the change of energy not the thing itself it's the context of change not the content of what is changing Context over content. When you're entering into the spiritual realm, you're dealing with context, not content. So there's not an angel with wings out here who is causing things to change. The pattern, the algorithm of that change, we've given it specific labels. So this archangel, we can call it Zadkiel, we can call it Kamael, right? That deal with metabolism, anabolism, catabolism, the building up and the breaking down and the stasis, right? What we call angels, these are actually the, the titles that we give for those specific algorithms. Now, dealing with the Kabbalistic system, there are 10 chief archangels who deal with 10 chief algorithms of change. And it doesn't matter who or what you are, those algorithms of change affect all levels of existence. As long as it's within Prakriti, these archangels and angels have an influence. I know it'll be hard to erase the vision of people with wings out of your head, but just try to understand that when we're talking about angels, demons, and spirits, we're not talking about beasts with teeth and eyes and wings. We're dealing with mathematics at the cosmic scale. Let me know if that makes sense. And, and then you also said, I used to pray and ask, could I be as important as one of the chosen they wrote about in the Bible? Okay, that was somebody different. That was Lance Benefield. But still, the fact that these angels and demons and algorithms affect everything within Prakriti, from the greatest of the great person to the lowest of the low person, shows that, what, what's the Bible say? God is not a respecter of persons. Everything within Prakriti is under the influence of these angels, spirits, algorithms. So no one is greater than the other. Some people learn how to utilize these algorithms. And honestly, that's what makes a person great, being able to utilize these algorithms. So it doesn't matter if you are LL Cool J or Aleister Crowley. If you learn these patterns and how to employ these patterns to give yourself a more efficient lifestyle, you can consider yourself one of the greats. So that means it doesn't depend on what bloodline you were born into. It depends on are you able to understand and grasp this information and apply it. So now all that means is be observant of reality. Pay attention to these patterns and you can pick them up. 
It helps to read. It helps to watch some of these lectures. It helps a lot to sit down and meditate. It helps to sit down and do these mantras. But either way, if you're keeping yourself occupied with growth, you're going to grow. 